All right, folks. So today we're going to be making popcorn, but not just yet. First, we need to talk about radioactive decay and what that means. Radioactive decay just means the breakdown of the nucleus of an atom. We also need to talk about what activity means. Activity is the number of decays that you get every second, and we measure this in Becquerel, which has got the units big B, small q. So an activity of 400 Becquerels means that you've got 400 nuclei decaying every second. But what does it mean if a nucleus decays? Well, let's imagine that we've got a nucleus. Nah, not this one. An unstable one. It's going to break apart. And it'll break apart into two things. The decay product and the new nucleus. Now a key thing to remember is that radioactive decay on a small scale is completely random. So on the scale of like a single nucleus, we can't predict when it's going to decay. We know that it will decay, but we can't say exactly when it'll decay. It's kind of like making popcorn. You know the popcorn is going to pop, but we can't predict which one is going to pop next. If we put making popcorn on a graph, then at the start, we have 100% unpopped corn. And some will pop. Some will pop more than others, some won't pop at all. And we'll get to the end where you've got that stubborn one that just refuses to go no matter how much you cook. If we repeated this a whole load of times and took an average, it wouldn't look like a jagged line. It would look like a smooth curve, kind of like this. If we take a closer look at the graph, we can find out that to cook half of our popcorn took one minute. To cook the next half that's left took one more minute. And to cook the next half that was left after that took one more minute again. So we find that the time taken to cook half of your popcorn has a constant value. We call this value the half-life. Half-life is the time it takes for the radioactive nuclei in a sample to decrease by half. So for example, for my popcorn, the half-life was one minute. Now this value is different for different materials. For example, carbon-14 has got a half-life of around about 5,700 years. Whereas iodine-131, that's got a half-life of around about eight minutes. So what would this look like in practice? Now let's imagine we've got two identical amounts of two different materials. We've got a kilogram of carbon-14 and a kilogram of iodine-131. It'll take 5,700 years for half of the carbon-14 to decay. Whereas it'll only take eight minutes for half of the iodine-131 to decay. Imagine that this is pounds of popcorn and it takes 5,700 years or eight minutes for half of your popcorn to cook. Now, because half-life is constant, it's going to take another 5,700 years every time the carbon-14 decays by half. And it'll take eight minutes for half of the remaining iodine-131 to decay. Let's do an example question. If we've got a material with a half-life of two days and it starts with an activity of 200 becquerels, what is the activity after four days? Pause the video and have a try. All right, if I was doing this question, the first thing that I would do is highlight the key information. They've told me that we have a half-life of two days and an activity of 200 becquerels. They want to know what the activity is after four days. All right, so we start with 200 becquerels and we know one half-life is two days. So after one half-life, which is two days, I will have 100 becquerels. I've halved the activity. After two more days, after a second half-life, I'm going to have 50 becquerels. So two days, two days, that's four days. After four days, I've got 50 becquerels. My value halved and then halved again. Two half-lives. And that's all, folks. 